In this topic, we're going to have a look at codominance and multiple alleles. So by the end of this topic, you should know what is codominance and what are multiple alleles, and give an example of each. So codominance is when you have both alleles which are equally dominant. Multiple alleles is when you have more than two alleles, of which only two may be present at the loci of individuals' homologous chromosomes. I'll explain what I mean in a little bit. Okay, looking at codominance, when present together, codominant alleles both affect the phenotype. Neither allele is dominant over the other. An example would be if you cross a red flowering plant with a white flowering plant. The allele for the red color and the allele for the white color are both dominant, so they're codominant. This means neither one is dominant over the other. Both these alleles are expressed in the heterozygote, so in the offspring. The red and the white, when they're both expressed together, will produce a pink flower. So we say that both alleles are active and the phenotype of the heterozygote is different from either homozygote. So this means that your offspring, the pink flower, is different in color, different in phenotype, to the red parent and the white parent. So you have more than two phenotypes are possible. Now in a snapdragon, there's an allele that codes for the enzyme that catalyzes the formation of a red pigment. There is another allele that codes for an altered enzyme that lacks this catalytic activity and doesn't produce the pigment. So in plants where no pigment is made, we say it's homozygous and the flowers are white. If you cross a red flower with a, a red flowering plant with a white flowering plant, you'll get a pink flowering plant, and this is heterozygous. So it only has a single allele for the functional enzyme, so it produces sufficient pigment so the flower looks pink. Okay, let's do a test cross or genetics cross between a red snapdragon plant and a white snapdragon plant. The first step is to write down the parents, phenotype and genotype. In this case, you've got the phenotype red flowers, white flowers. Genotype is C, superscript R, C superscript R, C superscript W, W. Then you write down the gametes, and you use the Punnett square to do the cross. So when you cross the male and the female, C superscript R with C superscript W, your resulting offspring will be C R W. CRW. What do you notice about the offspring or the F1 generation? All the genotypes will be CRCW. So you'll have pink flowers and your ratio is that all the flowers are going to be pink. Now if you cross the pink flowers with each other, you allow them to self-pollinate, what do you think you're going to get? Well, let's do it. The first step is to write down the parents, phenotype, genotype. So phenotype is pink flowers, genotype C, superscript R, C, superscript W. Write down the gametes. Remember to write them in circles. Then you do the Punnett square. So what you'll notice is you'll have one red flower, one white flower, and two pink flowers. So we write the F2 generation. The genotype, C superscript R, C superscript R, C superscript R, C superscript W, C, W, C, W. And your phenotype is one red flower, two pink flowers, one white flower. So what is your ratio? It's going to be one red to two pink to one white. So remember these or keep these ratios in mind in an exam so you know that you're along the right track. So why do we use the letters R and W instead of capital R, small r? This is because the alleles are different to one another. They are co-dominant. One is not dominant over the other. So if you have capital R, small r, this represents an allele that is dominant. One is dominant, one is recessive. In this case, they're co-dominant, so we write different letters. We also write them as superscripts on a letter that represents the gene. So in this case, the gene is for color. So we write C for color, superscript R, 
C superscript W. And then notice how your heterozygous plant, the pink plant, has got different letters. Codominance also occurs in cattle. So you've got two alleles for coat color, red and white. They are codominant. So how do we write this? We write C for color, superscript R if it's red, superscript W if it's white. If they are codominant, they're going to result in a phenotype that is different. So if you have your genotype where they're both the same, the homozygous, RR, you'll get a red coat. WW, you'll get a white coat. If you have um, if they're codominant, RW, you get a roan coat. So the phenotype is different. Looking at multiple alleles, sometimes a gene has more than two alleles. So we call this a, uh, these multiple alleles. So the inheritance of the human ABO blood group is an example. You've got three alleles associated with the immunoglobin gene I. And these lead to the production of different antigens on the surface of red blood cells. So you have allele IA leads to the production of antigen A. Allele IB leads to the production of antigen B. And then allele IO leads to the production of antigen, uh, doesn't lead to the production of any antigens. So although you've got three alleles, only two are present in an individual at one time because you've only got two homologous chromosomes and two gene loci. The alleles IA and IB are codominant, whereas the allele IO is recessive to both IB and IA. So what does this mean? We're going to look at the resulting blood groups. So remember that IA leads to production of antigen A, IB, production of antigen B, and IO doesn't lead to the production of any antigens. So since IA and IB are codominant, when you have IA and IB, you get blood group AB. How do you get blood group A? This is when IA, IA, it's homozygous, or it can be heterozygous IA, IO, because IA is dominant over IO. And when do you get blood group O. This is when you have IO with IO, so it's homozygous. Just briefly, the different blood groups have antigens on their cell surfaces. Notice that type A blood group has antigens A on its surface, but antibodies against B. The opposite is true for blood group B. This means if you were to put blood type A into a person who is blood group B, the antibodies against A in the person's body will attack the blood and cause it to clump or cause agglutination. What about a person who has blood AB? He can accept any blood because he doesn't have any antibodies against the other groups. Blood group O is the universal donor because it doesn't have any antigens on its surface, so it won't be attacked by the antibodies in the other blood groups. Okay, let's have a look at a question. What will the F1 generation's blood group be if you cross a mother with blood group O with a father with blood group AB? So the first step is to write down the parents' phenotype and genotype. So phenotype will be blood group AB, group O. Genotype will be IA, IB, and IO, IO. Then you write down the gametes in circles. And you use the Punnett square. So you have male, female. You get it the F1 generation, genotype phenotype. And your ratio will be 1 is to 1. So how do we use this Punnett square? We cross IA with IO, so you get IAO. Remember that um, antigen A <clears throat> is dominant over O, so the blood group will be A. You only get blood group O when you have IO, IO. In this case, the children, there's no IO, IO, so there'll be no blood group O. So what are your two blood groups that you get? You get 
blood group A and blood group B. Okay, let's do another question. If a father with blood group A and he's heterozygous has children with a mother with blood group B who's also heterozygous, what are the possible blood groups of the children? So press pause and try and work this out. Okay, first step, write down phenotype, genotype. Blood group A and blood group B. We know that they're heterozygous, so it's IA, IO, IBIO. Write down the gametes and circles. Use the Punnett square to work out the genetic cross. Then you write down your F1 generation. So genotype, phenotype. So you'll notice that you'll have all four blood groups. You're going to have blood group AB, A, B, and O. Okay, what have we looked at in this lesson? We looked at co-dominance, where two alleles are equally dominant. An example is the snapdragon. If the plant is heterozygous, so it has an allele that produces a red pigment, and an allele that doesn't produce a pigment, the resulting flower will be pink. We also discussed multiple alleles, where more than two, you have more than two alleles for a gene, but only two can be expressed at one time will be present at one time. In this example, we discussed the blood group A, B, and O, taking note that the alleles IA and IB are codominant, whilst the allele for IO is recessive to both. This means that the phenotype blood group O will only be expressed when the genotype is homozygous. And that concludes our lesson, the end.